Debbie is going to come and bring us our reading now. This reading is Romans chapter 12, starting from verse 9. Love in action. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honour one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervour serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who perse persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what's right in the eyes of everyone. If it's possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it's written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. Do not overcome by do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Thank you, Debbie. Uh, I'm now going to invite Nicola to, uh, to come up. Um, so before you, uh, before you speak to us tonight, uh, we'd like to ask you our usual two interview questions. Um, I'm quite familiar with this now, um, but uh, would you like to tell us a bit about yourself? Yes, so um, my name's Reverend Nicola Gillard, and um, I serve here in the Horwich and Rivington team. I tend to be up at Holy Trinity in Rivington quite a bit, but it's lovely to be here. I was coming here to St Elizabeth's and I minister at points and down at St Catherine's as well. I uh, live in Horwich, really near to the Leisure Centre. Um, I've been in Horwich um, for quite some years now and I love Horwich. I think it's a great place to live. I really like walking, I uh, really like reading. I also have a, a day job, if you want to call it that. I work for Urban Outreach Bolton and the Children and Families team leader there. I'm very blessed to have a good team of, of people and um, a couple of projects that we run around young people who go missing. There's quite some quite complex problems there with exploitation. And um, work on another project with young people who are experiencing mental health and we provide some groups and one-to-one -one support for those young people. Um, and I think that's probably me. Um, I'm a mum, um, my son's here tonight, <coughs> husband and daughter, and um, yeah, that's me. Great, and uh, the other question I'd like to ask is, could you tell us about the time when you've seen God at work? Okay. I was thinking about this today, and um, I've spoken here before, so I was trying to think what I'd said last time. Um, but there was two things that came to me, and the first one I thought, well actually, is this of the flesh, is this something that sounds more of the flesh than of God, but if we give God the glory for working through something, I think that it is of God. So one of the things I felt God really working through this year is for me to complete my curacy. So there's a very practical element to that, um, producing a portfolio and ticking a lot of boxes for the Church of England, which is, is fine and right. Um, and that's, that was hard in terms of time and pulling everything together, particularly having served a curacy in COVID. Um, I felt that was quite a challenge, but one God set on my heart and he is able, so he gave me that time, um, and that tenacity to just um, pull that all together. So I'm really pleased um, that uh, I'm moving on from my curacy, which is exciting. 
And then the second thing I feel God's doing at the moment on a more spiritual level is I think maybe I've become a bit hard-hearted and I feel recently God's been working on that and I've felt more broken and then in that brokenness felt more able to be open-hearted and compassionate to those who are struggling and those who need help and support. So spiritually that's what God's been doing recently and maybe we more for that. That's great, thank you. Uh, we'll pray for Nicola before she speaks to us. Lord, we want to thank you for Nicola. We want to thank you for the love that she has for college. And Lord, we thank you for your your help in her completing her curacy. And we are pleased to celebrate uh, that completion here too. And Lord, we ask that you, you continue uh, softening this heart, as, as she says, and that, we, you, um, and that we would see your glory through this. And Lord, give her your words as she speaks to us tonight so we may learn more of you and open our hearts and ears to hear what she has to say. Amen. Amen. So as Toby was saying, the past few sessions have focused on the fruits of the Spirit. Galatians 5 tells us the fruits are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And this evening we're looking at those final three. But I'm going to mix these up a little because I felt very much called to speak primarily on gentleness tonight. Gentleness then. Could we have the next slide, Toby? Is that okay? Brilliant, thank you. Jesus is the ultimate example of gentleness to us. So we start with that wonderful model from him and his invitation to us to rest in him and to learn from him. Come to me all you who labour and are burdened and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble of heart and you will find rest for yourselves. In a world where life is pretty fast and speed is ever increasing, we can see much striving and drivenness. It can be hard to be counter-cultural and to take a good look at our lives and our approaches. So here are a few extremes, a few funnies for us to have a look at. Speed dating, this is a thing. So first date, speed dating, however long you've got your 30 seconds. This is going so well, I think we've already split up. <laughs> or maybe you're more familiar with the second type of uh, speed stress. Why are you driving so slow? Have you no stress in your life? but not maybe so far away from ourselves and how we can act sometimes. Speed dating, as I said, is a thing. Cut to the chase, make a judgment in a few minutes. A message that says it's not really worth investing much time in people. Anger when someone may be driving slower or taking their time. When did taking time become such a problem? Is that gentle, I wonder? And I wonder if you recognise some of the stress and the rush and the desire for control in our own lives. I can only stand here tonight and share of myself, but there are times when I've caught myself being so determined to get the job done that I've missed sleep, that I've shortened or cheapened time with my friends, 
my family, just to get everything ticked off. And that list is ongoing. Is that gentle? Let's have a look at the next slide. Jesus desires that we work from the certainty of being loved rather than to earn that love. The gentleness of loving who we are rather than what we can do and what we can achieve. If we could establish that foundation of being lovers of God, then we also could protect ourselves from discouragement, from despair, from boredom and frustration. Being loved and knowing that we are loved can generate a gentle spirit. Jesus is gentle with us. He gives us time and he gives us space to be ourselves. Jesus desires that we experience his divine and his everlasting love. There's no speed dating here where we have a few minutes to prove ourselves in front of him. There's no need to sell ourselves by listing the day's achievements. There's no tick list of things that he needs to do before he gets to us. But he offers us that lifelong relationship where we are called to abide in him. It's a gentle space and a gentle grace. Jesus was and is always fully present in the moment with God, with others, and with himself. And we don't have to be perfect and we don't have to get it right to abide in that gentleness. Psalm 43 acknowledges when deep calls to deep. A connection where the soul thirsts for God, no matter what circumstance, seeking after God, the living God. We don't need to be afraid to be honest with God. We don't have to be happy all the time. And we don't want to act as if we've got everything all together. Because none of us do. We can all cry out to God with a genuine heart and know that he doesn't silence our concerns. Each and every concern comes before the ears of God. And he never turns his heart from any of us. Gentle space and gentle grace. Surely this opens our hearts to respond. Next slide, please. Carol Arnott, who's a writer and evangelist, summarises it like this. There must be time for him, just to love him and to have him love us. No other agendas, no shopping list or prayer requests. We need to put loving him first. Because only as we are filled with his love do we have love to give away. Only as we are filled with his love do we have love to give away. Our next slide shows us that gentleness is a way for us as Christians to stand in contrast to the disorder and the selfish conduct of the world. A display of God's love to those who are walking in darkness. The book of James says this, For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure, then peaceable, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits, without inconsistency or insincerity. And in some ways, this leads on to self-control, where we abide in Jesus' gentle space and gentle grace. This helps us live a spirit-filled life of self-control. But we know, don't we, that self-control is a really difficult fruit to cultivate. Whether we struggle with controlling our anger or controlling our appetite, most of us have at least one area in our lives where we find this difficult. Yet by controlling our emotions, when we are provoked to anger, for example, 
we are able to demonstrate Christ's love to those around us and to live peaceably with them. Proverbs 15 notes the self-control of a gentle tongue. That's a challenge to me sometimes. A mild answer turns back wrath, but a harsh words stir up anger. Philippians speaks into our actions and our journey with God and the impact of a closer journey with him. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. So let's have a look at a few more funnies on this one. Self-control is not eating all your popcorn before the cinema starts. I wonder if that's happened to you. Self-control is knowing you can but deciding that you won't. A real discipline. And although this is really difficult to practice this self-control, the Holy Spirit helps us. The Holy Spirit helps us to have power over our desires and our wants. With his help, we can act in love and have control over temptation and sin. For God didn't give us that spirit of cowardice, but rather of power and love and self-control. The Holy Spirit can help us when we feel hurt or alienated or discouraged. We could have the next slide, Toby. In our Bible passage today, Jesus urges us not to retaliate, but to be at peace. Most of us want to push back against these words. When someone assails our work ethic, we want to point out all their flaws. When someone fails to give us credit for an idea, we want to make our contributions known. And maybe when somebody goes behind our back, we feel like we want to go behind theirs as well. When someone is unkind, we can have a desire to be unkind back. And yet Jesus calls us to turn the other cheek to go the second mile, to love our enemies and to pray for those who persecute us, to forgive so that we might be forgiven. <coughs> At the cross, Jesus set that perfect example, praying, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Practically then, how can we live out these words? Well, I suppose one thing to think of, if we have a look at the next slide, is to believe that God's justice is greater than your vindictiveness. To leave that room for God's wrath. They're Paul's words. To try and let go of some of that control that we seek. Some of that desire that we want. That Old Testament thinking, <coughs> eye for an eye. God is the judge. And God is a God of perfect justice. And remember who you are in Christ. We mostly want to retaliate because we have had our self-worth slighted. But no matter how degraded or hurt you feel, God has already upgraded you to the most valuable position. You are a child of God. You are precious to him. And he proves to be our strength and his power is mighty in our weakness. It's Jesus who truly equips us all in the hope that he offers us. And this finally leads us on to faithfulness. And in many ways we turn once more to God. Unsurprisingly, the majority of references to faithfulness in the Bible all refer to God's faithfulness. Time and time again do we have those wonderful promises. For the Lord is good, his loving kindness is everlasting, and his faithfulness to all generations. And yet as Christians we can struggle with this, to completely trust, to recognise that faithfulness in all situations. We are called to be faithful to him, 
as he is faithful to us. We can have the next slide, Toby. Sometimes we just miss the point. We just don't get it. But we're promised that if we're faithful in the small things, God will reward us. As we perform the simple tasks of our daily lives, it's easy to feel that they're insignificant, that they have no importance to God. But God is watching us and he sees these small acts of faithfulness we do each and every day. And even when we're struggling, we can also take comfort that God continues to both uphold us and protect us. But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. We just have the next slide. Let's just have a look at that for one moment. Whatever situation you're going through, wherever you are with God, whatever is or isn't speaking to you this evening, know this, that the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you. Horace Jackson Brown Jr. was an American author and he wrote an inspirational book called Life's Little Instruction Book. If only it was that simple. But he said this, don't be afraid to go out on a limb. That's where the fruit is. Don't be afraid to go out on a limb. That's where the fruit is. Trusting in Jesus' gentleness and abiding in his love. Allowing the Holy Spirit to grow you in self-control. And trusting in God, in him who is always faithful, sometimes takes a bit of risk. Going out on a limb, turning that worldly view upside down. That can feel different, it can feel challenging for us. But ultimately, the Lord is good and he is faithful. We are blessed because Jesus is total love and total forgiveness. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction and faithful in prayer. We have a gentle space and a gentle grace. Let God meet you where you are tonight. He is faithful. He is gentle. He loves you. Let's pray. Jesus, we praise you for your gentleness. In a life where the world can be tough, you bring peace and hope and joy. We thank you that you never leave us. We thank you that you long to draw 